What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. This season is about to get active. We have a tropical wave that is currently trying to organize and develop in the central tropical Atlantic. We have another tropical wave that just came off of Africa this morning and is has a better chance of developing out here in the Atlantic. We're going to go ahead and cover all of it. We have another tropical wave that may develop in the Gulf of Mexico, according to some models. We're going to go ahead and go over all of it right here in this video. So here's the situation we have for you from the National Hurricane Center. We have a 10% chance of development of this disturbance and a 30% chance of development with this one over here. So we're going to go ahead and go over this real quickly. Here's what we got. A tropical wave is producing disorganized showers and thunderstorms a few hundred miles west-southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands, 10% chance in the next seven days. A tropical wave is forecast to move off the west coast of Africa tonight or early Wednesday. Some slow development of the system is possible later this week or over the weekend. Environmental conditions are expected to become unfavorable by the early next week. 30% chance in the next seven days going into this right here so now we're going to go ahead and show you some model runs to see what kind of stuff is going to be going on so we're going to go ahead and start with the european then the first tropical wave we have going on right here this is the second one that will be coming off the coast of Africa. The Zero Z European still has this first tropical wave attempting to move through the Caribbean, although I have seen other models of it potentially moving towards the north, towards the Leeward Islands, so we'll have to pay attention to that. This tropical wave starts developing, according to the European, in the pretty much in the Atlantic Basin over here. So time will really tell what will happen, but this tropical wave that's over the Antilles will, is anticipated, according to the European Zero Z, to move through uh, Puerto Rico, potentially the Dominican Republic, south of Cuba. So this is something we need to continue monitoring as this does pose a threat to land going into day five, day six, day seven. Next thing we're going to go ahead and show you is the CMC. We're going to go ahead and show you that. Here's what we have for the CMC. The CMC with this uh, ensemble run, run, not ensemble, but model run right here, there's a bunch of, a lot of tropical systems that are going on. So this is the first tropical wave we have going on. The CMC is moving this to the north towards the Leeward Islands and Puerto Rico before making a northward turn towards the Atlantic Basin, strengthening it into a hurricane as time continues to go on. And the CMC has four separate tropical waves potentially developing all on a huge wave train right here. So this is what we have from the CMC, and even if all four of these do not develop, it is still going to moisten up the atmosphere and allow for more st and even some stronger tropical waves to move off of Africa and start weakening. Another thing I'm noticing from the CMC is there's a tropical wave that is currently right now near the Antilles. It is expected to move through Cuba and the Dominic in Haiti right here before starting to organize and develop near the Gulf of uh, Mexico, near the Bay of Campeche. And by the time it does organize and strengthen, we're looking at potentially strong tropical storm force as it approaches the Texas-Mexico border right here. So that's something we need to monitor, especially as time continues to go on. And tropical development, according to this, is only about, starts about, what, what five days out? So that's Already uh, looking at that, pretty interesting going on. Next one we're sh showing you is the GFS. We're going to go ahead and pull that up. The GFS has a similar situation with the European. It has this tropical wave moving through the Caribbean Sea right here, not really doing much development-wise until it gets to the Gulf of Mexico. However, it does have this a tropical wave out here in, in, in the Atlantic over here starting to develop potentially up to tropical storm strength before ultimately dissipating due to some drier air right there. The GFS has a crazy scenario s similar to that of the CMC, but a lot far out, a lot further out, excuse me. <clears throat> so I'm not inclined to really trust it that much. Next one we're showing you is the Icon Run. We're going to the 0Z since the 12Z is not ready yet. The Icon Run has this thing kind of doing this similar thing to what the CMC is doing. It actually has it moving towards the Leeward Islands before starting to jerk off towards the uh, north over there. And then you have this thing right here, this tropical wave going on. So, yeah, that's the interesting thing with an icon. This thing is potentially strengthening up to a tropical storm. It's similar to the CMC. This has a huge wave train going on, so... 
Once again, all these are going to do is moisten up the atmosphere, even if they do not develop. So that's what we have going on on that flank. Now we'll show you the nav gem run. And the nav gem has been pretty interesting, to say at the very least. The Zero Z nav gem has this tropical wave kind of approaching the uh, approaching the Antilles. However, considering it's 180 hours out, it's too early to tell where the, exactly it's going to go from there. But interesting stuff is starting to roll around, and we'll continue to update you here on the channel. Now we're going to go ahead and talk about the global sea temperatures and the OHC. Global sea temperatures are easily what's working for all these tropical waves right here. 28 plus degrees Celsius waters from pretty much the United States all the way to Africa. And that's something that has never been seen before. So that should be raising some alarm bells. The main development region is an 82 plus degrees Fahrenheit of water. OHC component Absolutely insane OHC, although starting out in the central tropical Atlantic, there isn't that much to work with. There's about 50, 25, 50 OHC to work with for now. But as it continues to move west, it moves in better OHC conditions up to 75, up to 100 OHC as it approaches the Antilles. However, with the one that is coming off of Coast Africa, if it's moving this way, it's not going to have much ocean heat content to work with. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the wind shear component we have to all this. And the wind shear across parts of the Atlantic and parts of the Caribbean has increased quite a bit. However, it's fluctuating off and on, off and on, off and on, off and on. So we'll have to wait and see how that wind shear goes in X executes itself so we'll go ahead and show you the eastern atlantic as well pretty much the southern main development region does have quite a bit of shear in it but the area where these tropical waves are coming off not terrible around 10 to 20 knots of wind shear so something to monitor absolutely and we'll continue to up to you on the wind shear now we're going to go ahead and show you the shear and the moisture forecast going into this. Here's the shear forecast going into this. Okay, this is the 6Z. I meant, I meant to pull up the 0Z. Here's what we have going on. The wind shear does kind of persist quite a bit uh, through, much, through the European run, especially in the main development region. However, as time continues to go on, yes, we do see increased shear, but across the MDR, it does start to weaken considerably by next week. And there is a bit of a trough and a ridge of wind shear that's going to be moving through parts of the Atlantic right there. So that may hinder development, at least for the short term. However, when you compare that to the dry air component, there's not nearly as much dry air as there was, say, like five days ago. So if, if it, we have a scenario where there's a bunch of shear, there's pl but there's plenty of warm water, plenty of OHC, and a lot of, uh, of moist air, it definitely could do a lot of things to counteract that wind shear right there. So this is why I'm paying close attention to this, uh, uh, at least down the road. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the European Ensemble runs, just to give you kind of neat this, wrap this up on a neat little bow. And the European Ensembles, as you can see right here, do get quite interesting as we move forward. The European Ensembles for both of these waves do have a lot of scenarios developing. However, the European Ensembles now have this tropical wave that's pretty much, uh, pretty much right here expected to develop. They're having it move further to the north, potentially towards the Lesser Antilles, or missing it entirely, and not a lot of them are going into the Caribbean. However, According to the European, they are also watching this tropical wave over, uh, pretty much over here, similar to the CMC, and potential development, some strong development actually, and we can and emphasize this on the 6Z as well, as that's calling for that, so potential uh, development over there, we'll have to wait and see what happens to that tropical wave, but as time continues to go on, both of these waves move uh, out to sea right there, so that's the interesting thing we have going on. And pretty much by the time we get to 15 days out, we're seeing a lot more tropical waves come off the coast. We're seeing a lot more scenarios uh, starting to pop up across the Atlantic Ocean. So this is something we need to continue monitoring as time continues to go on. But with that being said, we're closing the video out right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.